9 kL equals 144. So if I, I want kL, I just have to divide through by what? 9. Now what is kL? When you divide 144 over 9, what do you get? You have 16, right? Good. So when you come to this side of the board, you have 16 here. Yes, that's a complete question. So you have finished copying and what? Completing. As the question demanded. So we'll find a relation between P and K. There is a relation. Constant of proximity, that is it. Right? You can even rewrite and shape the K in as we used to do in the other videos. Bring a direct. That's also not bad. Copy and complete. You have to complete before uh, shipping in those values like 18 and 16 as we saw in the table. So that is it for this question. Now, we look at the very last question under inverse. So as you can see, we are not picking the same kind of questions. We are picking different formats. So you've seen one like this, you've seen the other like that. We're also going to pick a question which will push us into even doing something like quadratic or how we can even deal with the situation if we are not so good at quadratic. So this question that we are going to look at, right, it will push us into quadratic equation. What if you hate quadratic equation or you don't know quadratic equation? Fine. We're going to give you a shortcut. You can dodge quadratic equations if the equations are inverse. It's possible. You can dodge it. So you are going to work the two-fold answers for you to see, right? Okay. So we have 8 k squared plus 2 k plus 1. Once again. Okay. So we have 8 k squared plus 16 k plus 8 equals 32. Good. So that is what we have here. Now, it is a quadratic expression as you can see. So we bring this 32 in here. Now, if the 32 leaves here, it leaves 0 in this place. That is how come the quadratic equation happens to have 0. Now, good. 8 k squared plus 16 k minus 24 equals 0. That's what I'm going to get. Now, we have to solve this quadratic equation. Now, how do we solve this? So the numbers here are too huge, so we try to divide through. Let's reduce the numbers. Divide through by 8. So if I divide through by 8, I'm going to get k squared. I divide here by 8, I'll get 2k. Here by 8, I get red. Good. I think we can deal with this. Now there's a constant factor here, 1. Good. There's a that, number, there's, there's 1. So if you don't know how to solve quadratic, then just follow this simple approach here. You can see the arrows, right? Now multiply the constants and the edges. You get minus 3. So always. So if here is 2, you multiply this by this. Always. Now, go and look for the factors of minus 3. So meaning 2 numbers to multiply here minus 3. But when you add, you get this middle man. 2 numbers to multiply and get minus 3. But when you add, you get positive 2k. So you can test the factors this way. So it's going to be minus 3 by 1. Yes, you get minus 3. It's working. Good. Now let's add in the same way and see whether we get our minus 3. Min positive 2, right? So minus 3 plus 1, you get minus 2. I think the factors are bad. They're not working. Good. Let's turn the other way around. Minus 1 by 3, I get minus 3. Now minus 1 plus 3, I get positive 2. Good. It's going to work. So I have minus 1 KO. Why do I call this KO? We are working in kill terms and 3 kill. So that is what we are going to use. So always test your factors to see whether they are fitting. Now if the factors are working, everything will work well. So two numbers you multiply and get what have been circled here. But when you add that same two numbers, you get another one here. So why do we do that? Every quadratic, you see, that's a 3 term quadratic. We can group. So we have to make an assumption to create them or make them four terms. That is why we do that. Okay, good. So let's check them in. So this man is going off. So I bring minus one kill. I can see plus three kill. And I lower this man down here. Good. So do you know that if you put minus one kill and three kill together, you get positive two kill? 
that makes the assumption correct. So I can now group. Good. Here is method of grouping, as you can see. So we have grouped them well. Good. Now I factor Q out. Q into Q squared. That is Q. Q here, one. Three out. Three goes into three Q. Q. Three into minus three, one. So always, what you get here is the same thing as you see here. So we just factor one. You put this outside as you can see. Put them together. Equal to zero. Okay. So k minus one, k minus one. You get the same thing here. And you put these ones together. That is what we have here. So implication. It means k minus one equals zero. So the whole of this is equal to zero. You solve for that. So this one goes here. You get one. Also. K plus 3 equals 0. So the whole of this is equal to 0. So this positive 3 goes there, you get minus 3. So the values of K, we have them to be 1 and negative 3. So that is the end of this question, right? Whereas that this question is very lengthy. Now, let's see the next approach. In case okay, so let's look at an alternative. Okay, now this alternative is going to work for those who don't want to see the quadratic. And that will be very simple. And remember from the question, we are told that P varies inversely as the square of this. So they give us when P equals 2, K is what? 3. Okay, let's chip in. So I think we have to introduce our constants as usual and label the equation appropriately okay maybe we should start whatever so p 2 k we don't know there is 3 plus 1 all square so there is 2 k over 4 that is what you see because 3 plus 1 is 4 4 squared you are going to get somewhere 16 now 2 equals k over 16 so k equals 2 by 16 so k okay, will give me 32 good so my equation reduces to something like this so there is an alternative that is p equals 32 over k plus 1 all squared that is equation what star good now when p is 8 k we don't know now let's see what happened here so this implies 8 equals 32 over k plus 1 all squared. So I cross multiply. I get this. Okay. So that is when the trick sets in. You see, if you expand this, it will take you to quadratic. Because this is a perfect square. You have to double up and expand, taking you to the quadratic approach. Now, we are not going to expand this. That is just similar to something like this. If they ask you to find x, what will you do? You just divide 2 by 2, right? Good. Now, if you still have this, they ask you to find x. You still divide 2 by 2. It will left with something like this. And I told you what we, we do with this. Good. Now, what you have to do is to just divide through by what? This. Why that? Because if you have 2x and you're looking for x, you divide 2 by 2. So divide 2 by 8 just to set this one free. This will give you 4. Good. Okay. So we have k plus 1 all squared equals 4. Can you remember? This will form a root on that. So what you see here is this. Now you have KO plus 1 equals what? Plus or minus 4. Now plus or minus 2. Root of 4 is 2. You see, anytime you take a root of an answer, it's always plus or minus the answer from the general quadratic rule. That is what you are seeing here. You see, what if you don't know this? What will happen is that then you just end up getting some answer like this. You just come by saying 1. But meanwhile, you told me that find the values of KO. It means the root of an answer is always plus or minus. 
If not, you see, there's a cancer I've been again. So those who didn't, who did it in the right way had the two KO answers. But you are going to get just one KO answer. So it's true, the plus and minus really works. Good. So you have this. So it means KO plus one can be equal to two because I said plus or minus two. So KO equals two minus one. I'll get one. Also, I can also say KO plus one equals negative two because you said it's plus or minus two. So one is positive two, this is what I get. Now one is negative two. Good. You see we are also there, right? Good. So the alternative is very easy, as you can see. That is the end of the inverse variation as a topic that we wanted to see. And we have seen it finally. See you in the next video.